This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. We are listening to testimony from the trial of Lori Vallow Daybell. There's been a lot of it on the 28th of April, 2023. We're now going to be listening to Fremont County Coroner Brenda Dye testifying in the trial and explaining why an autopsy wasn't done. Take a listen. All right, before we get started with testimony, let me just inquire of the witness. Have you reviewed in any way any of the trial testimony in this case um, by either attending any of the simulcast locations or watching it online or listening to it or reading about it in any way? No. Okay, thank you for that response. As your question, please talk directly into that microphone, make verbal responses to any answers, and try to avoid talking at the same time as the attorney so we keep the record clear. And with that in mind, Ms. Blake, you can inquire on your direct examination. Thank you. Would you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? Brenda Dye, last name D-Y-E. Where are you currently employed? I'm currently employed um, in Fremont County as the county coroner and Fremont County EMS. And talking about your employment as an EMS, how long have you been employed as an EMT or an EMS? I've been an EMT for five years and advanced EMT for 20 years. As part of your EMT training, are you trained in life-saving techniques? Yes, I am. Are you also trained in responding to emergency medical situations? Yes. And you indicated that you're also employed as the deputy, or excuse me, as the coroner for Fremont County? Yes. Is that an elected position? Yes. Do you recall when you took office? I was elected in 2018. I took office um, January 2019. When you took office as a coroner, did you end up going to any training? Yes. What was that? I did a week-long coroner school in Las Vegas, Nevada. I also did a spring training in Boise here in Ada County. Had you been employed anywhere previously as a coroner? No. What are some of your duties as a coroner? As a coroner, I respond to all unattended deaths. Um, I make sure the bodies get to the correct facility, the funeral home. Um, I conduct investigations. um, And I'm the one that uh, certifies the cause of death and signs off on the death certificate. And when you say unattended death, what do you mean by that? Somebody who is not directly under a doctor's care. And as a coroner, do you respond out to all unattended deaths in Fremont County? Yes, I do. And if I'm not available, I do have um, a couple of deputy coroners that help me out. Do you recall responding to a, a report of an unattended death on the morning of October 19th, 2019? Yes. Do you recall approximately when you responded? It was just before 6 a.m., I believe, or, I clo- or thereafter, shortly thereafter. And do you, when you say uh, around 6 a.m., is that when the call was reported or the death was reported? It was reported approximately 5.45 in the morning. And prior to you responding out, uh, did anyone else respond? Yes. Who was that? I called my deputy coroner, um, Cami Wilmore, to respond. She was closer than I was. Uh, when dispatch called me, the uh, reporting party was very upset and distraught, so I had my deputy coroner go so she could beat me there on scene. And also, there was an officer on scene. And you had requested specifically the deputy coroner respond out based on the description of the decedent's husband? Yes. And is it possible that your arrival was closer to 7 a.m.? I'll object, Your Honor, leading. 
It is leading. Sustain. To be clear, when you arrived on scene, your deputy coroner was already there? Yes. And if she had been there at 6.30, you would have arrived after that? I'll object, Your Honor. Leading? Overruled. Yes. When you arrived on scene, did you make any initial observations regarding Chad Davo? Yes. And what were those observations? Uh, he was clearly distraught, upset, um, crying that his wife uh, was deceased. As part of your job as a coroner, are you also looking at the scene? Yes. Are you gathering information from individuals on scene? Yes. When you first entered into the residence, were there any observations of the scene that caused you concern? No. At some point, were you led to where Tammy's body was? Yes. Do you recall who told you where her body was located? I believe it was my deputy coroner, uh, Wilmore. And prior to going back to look at Tammy's body, did you have any discussions with anyone? Yes. And who was that? I had a discussion with deputy coroner Wilmore and officer Greenhall in the kitchen of the house. And do you know when you arrived if Tammy's body had been moved? Yes. Do you know who had moved her body? Yes, Chad and Garth. How did you learn that they had moved her body? They stated that they had picked her up off the floor and put her back in bed. And when you say they, did both Chad and Garth tell you that? Yes. Did Chad provide any additional information regarding how Tammy ended up on the floor? Yes. What did he tell you? He said he felt her move off the bed, fall off the bed. And when he woke up, he touched her and she was cold to the touch. Um, he then yelled for his son, Garth, whose room was across the hall and the both of them picked her up off the floor and put her back in bed. Do you recall if he indicated approximately when that would have been? Before 6 a.m. that morning. Did he tell you anything else surrounding the circumstances of Tammy's death? Yes, he stated the night before she had a coughing fit and threw up and her, him and Garth saw her throw up in the toilet. She flushed it. He helped, he as in Chad helped her back to bed and she stated that she was okay and he then went back to sleep. And outside of Chad having moved the body, do you know if her body had been moved by the officer, the deputy coroner at that time? No. And had it been moved? No. I asked it. Outside. I think I asked a compound question, so I was just trying okay. to be clear. Um, Your Honor, I would ask to be able to publish states, some of state's exhibit of 295, the first one being 295A. You can publish it. And looking at that photo, is that an accurate depiction of what you saw when you first arrived? Yes. And after gathering the information from Chad, did you make observations of Tammy's body yourself? Yes. And what were some of the observations that you ended up making? Just by looking at her walking through the door, she had some blood tinged sputum coming from her mouth, and she was covered in blankets. Your Honor, I would next publish states 295E. Okay. 
When you talk about the blood-tinged sputum, is that what we're seeing in this photo here? Yes. Do you recall at the time you responded out to this, uh, to the death of Tammy Daybell, how many deaths you'd responded out to as a deputy coroner? Approximately 20. To the best of your knowledge, were any of those deaths determined to be death by asphyxiation? No. Had you responded out to um, scenes as an EMT in which you had seen something similar to this uh, sputum? Yes. So you had seen this before? Yes. Had you seen it very many times previous to this? No. And with regard to that sputum, was anything done? Your Honor, this is State's Exhibit 295B. Okay. Yes, that towel sitting next to the bed on that mat. Um, it's a kitchen hand towel. And Chad had been wiping her face with that towel. And did Chad tell you that? Yes. Did you also do anything with that towel? I did. I wiped it away to see if it stopped coming out. And when I wiped it, then there was still blood tinge sputum after I wiped. Did you make other observations with regard to Tammy's body? After, after I questioned Chad, he left the room and... Uh, Deputy Coroner Wilmore and Officer Greenhall helped me. We uncovered the body, took the blankets off, and um, did our investigation. We did notice a bru bruise on her right arm, I believe. And when we rolled her, she had lividity um, in her back and backside. And when you talk about lividity, what do you mean by that? Lividity is the blood pooling at the lowest point of the body once the heart stops beating and the blood stops circulating. In your honor, I would uh, publish 295G. Very well. And when you talk about removing the blankets from the body, is this an accurate depiction of what you would have observed? Yes. And you indicated the lividity lividity you observed would have been on the back side? Yes. And I would publish 295F. You may. And I don't know if you can see it that well on the big screen. You may be able to see it better on your screen. When you talk about the bruising, can you see that in this photo at all? A little bit on the right arm. And were you able to make a determination regarding when you believed those bruises would have been inflicted? Not an exact determination. Uh, we thought yeah, they I'll were... object, Your Honor, to foundation. I'll sustain that. I think there needs to be additional foundation for that testimony. I will ask it this way. Did you do any kind of assessment on scene to determine the uh, how old those bruises may have been? Yes. Yeah, and I'll, I'll object, Your Honor. I don't think she's qualified to make that determination. The foundation you laid when uh, related to her experience as an EMT over the years stated, but I didn't hear any additional information that would uh, indicate she's qualified to give that opinion. So if it is there, Ms. Blake, you could inquire with further foundation. As part of your investigation while you were on scene, did you ask Chad for more information regarding Tammy's health? Yes. 
And did he, in fact, provide that? Yes. What did he tell you? He said that she had been feeling really off lately, like she wasn't in her body, that she had had some syncopal episodes, which is fainting. Uh, one specific time was at the temple as she was kneeling at the altar. When she went to stand up, she uh, passed out on the floor. He also stated she had very low blood pressure. So I asked if she had seen a doctor for that or been treated for that. He said that she didn't go to doctors very often. She tried to treat everything naturally with oils and natural supplements. Uh, he said that she had fallen uh, a few times by the syncopal episodes. Do you recall if he told you anything about Tammy having shaking fits? Yes. When I observed the uh, blood tinge, the pink sputum coming from her mouth, I started to question what that could be from. Um, I asked if she had any seizure-like activity when she had the syncopal episodes. Uh, he did say that when she had those episodes, she, her legs would shake, and she did have some convulsions. And did he tell you about the shaking fits prior to you mentioning seizures? No. So he continued to provide additional information uh, based on things you would mention? Yes. Do you recall if he mentioned anything regarding Tammy going through menopause? Yes, he stated that she liked to sleep on the edge of the bed with her legs outside of the covers because she was having hot flashes. And when he talked to you about her getting sick in the night, did he indicate who had gone in the bathroom with her? He did say that him and Garth both witnessed her throwing up. And talking about the lividity, do you recall if you observed it anywhere else on her body besides her back? I, it was only in her backside, so which indicates she was on her back at the time of her death. Did Chad tell you anything regarding how Tammy had been feeling uh, in the month before her death? Yes, that she was just feeling very off, behind, slower, uh, and the fainting spells. And she did have a fall outside and hurt her wrist. She did get an x-ray on that uh, just to make sure it wasn't broken. And stated that it was just a sprain and the doctor had given her tramadol. And when I looked for the tramadol, he stated that she had taken it all, which um, there was no pill bottle found on scene. Do you recall him also uh, making a statement that she feels like she's outside her body? Yes. And did he tell you that she'd indicated that to him, him being Chad? Yes. When you respond to the unattended deaths, do you have the benefit of having the decedent's medical records in front of you? I don't. And when you respond to the scene, is it ultimately up to you to determine a cause of death? Yes. And do you also, are you tasked with determining the manner of death at that time? Yes. Were you relying, actually I will back up. Judge, if I can uh, publish 295G again. You may.
In looking at this photo, do you notice anything with regard to the mattress? It's a little off the box springs. Do you um, recall if Chad told you anything as to why it was off the box springs? No. And at this point in time, did you move the mattress yourself? No. This would have been an accurate depiction of how the mattress was? Yes. When you were doing your observation of Tammy, did you... Actually, I'm going to publish uh, 295A, please. During your observations and exam of Tammy, did you notice any head injuries? No. Did you notice any cuts or bruising consistent with her hitting her head on a nightstand? No. Is, as the coroner, is it ultimately up to you to determine whether or not an autopsy should be conducted? Yes, I consult with uh, our detectives, and sometimes I consult with the receiving facility, the mortician, the funeral directors. And did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. Based on what you knew in your observations, did any was anything suspicious to you regarding this scene at the time? No. Did you find anything suspicious as to the description of Tammy's body falling out of bed? Yes. What was that? I I asked Chad how she could fall out of bed if she was already deceased and how her legs were still wrapped in the covers and the sheets. That's what he stated. His response was that it was because her sheet her legs were wrapped in the sheet. No, um, he had told me that her legs were wrapped in the sheet, that her head had fallen off the side of the bed, and her left side of the body was hanging off. And I asked how that could happen if she was already deceased. Did Chad provide a response or an answer? He did. He said he must have pulled the top sheet when he rolled over in his sleep, releasing her because she liked to sleep on the edge of the bed. And when you responded, did you notice any signs of rigor mortis? Yes. And what is rigor mortis? After the body has been dead for approximately two to it's two to six hours, then rigor mortis starts to set in and the body just becomes stiff. And were you able to estimate or determine a time of death? I estimated the time of death between 12.30 a.m. and 2 o'clock a.m. Um, based on the rigor mortis and the lividity and the temperature of her body. The abdomen was cold to the touch, which is the last place that stays warm, and it was cold to the touch when I arrived. Would you, based on your estimation, of the time of death, do you think it's probable that Tammy didn't die until after 5.30 a.m.? No. At the time that you're making a determination whether or not to have an autopsy conducted, are you considering the information available to you? Yes. And your observations on scene? Yes. And ultimately, in this case, you determined to not have an autopsy conducted. Is that correct? correct? After consulting with the detective over the phone and Officer Greenhall and Deputy Coroner Wilmore. Did Chad request an autopsy? No. Did he make any indication to you regarding the autopsy? No. Do you issue a death certificate, or excuse me, do you issue death certificates? I sign off on them. So you sign off on them to be submitted the to the state? Yes, on the cause of death, yes. Did you, in fact, do that on a death certificate for Tamara Daybell? Yes. Do you recall what you indicated the cause of death to be? Cause was pulmonary edema due to syncopal episodes with seizure-like activity, um, 
and the manner natural. And again, that was based on, uh, excuse me, let me back up. Was that based in large part on information Chad Daybell provided you? Yes, and also a daughter gave me some medical history background on her. And do you know if an autopsy was ultimately performed on Tamara Daybell? Yes, it was. Do you know if there was an exhumation? Yes. Did you, in fact, attend the exhumation? Yes. Did you also attend the autopsy? Yes. Do you know who conducted the autopsy? A medical examiner from the Utah uh, morgue. And you didn't... uh, (coughs) And you did attend that? Yes. And, Your Honor, I'm just looking at the time. Uh, I'm not sure when the court wanted to break. I think it would be a good point if you're still uh, working through direct. I still have some additional questions, so. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. We'll take a a second break here. That'll be the last break of the day. We do have uh, something for the jurors, so this will probably be... 40 minutes or so. All right, please. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, if we can have the witness brought back and also the jurors brought in, please. Thank you, Mr. Bailiff. Please be seated. Okay, we're back on the record on CR 221-1624, State of Idaho versus Lori Noreen Vallow. Ms. Blake is continuing direct examination of the witness, Brenda Dye. I'll remind the witness you're still under oath for your testimony. Ms. Blake, if you'd like to continue to inquire at this time, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Dye, I was going to back up just a little bit. Uh, when you responded out, um, you said, and I, I just want to clarify with you, did you mention syncopal episodes or did Chad? Um, <clears throat> Chad mentioned it in the temple instance. And again, what are syncopal episodes? Fainting. And did Chad use the term fainting to describe it? Yes. And then the medical terminology that you know would be syncopal? Yes. But he did not talk about the shaking fits until you mentioned seizure-like activity? 
Yes, correct. And, Your Honor, I'm going to ask to publish 295J. It's previously admitted. Very well. You may publish it. And in this photo, we can see that pink sputum that you'd talked about. Um, and again, just kind of backing up, you said that it had seemed odd to you that someone deceased would have fallen out of the bed, and you discussed that with Chad, correct? Yes. Based on his description to you, um, again, which part of the body did he describe as having fallen out of bed? Her head and upper left side of her body. And when you look at this photo and you can see some stuff draining down her face, would that be consistent with someone being on their back? Yes. If she had actually fallen out of bed, uh, would you have expected to see that dripping somewhere else or the flow going a different direction? Uh, yes. It is. It is a little bit to the left, um, just depending on... How her head was tilted is what direction it would flow. Is what direction it would flow. Yes. So depending on how she'd fallen out of bed, that would control the flow. Yes. Um, but would this flow be consistent with someone laying on their back as well? It looks to be more t to the left than running down mid mid chin. And again, on that photo, that was the condition that the sputum and the flow was in at the time you arrived? Yes. And you had you did indicate Chad said he had been wiping it. Do you know if he'd wiped it prior to your arrival? Yes, because when I grabbed the towel, it had residue on it, the blood. So you're unaware if this was the condition that Chad first found her in? As far as oh, where the blood in the sputum yes. was? Yes, unaware of that. And we talked about that you attended an autopsy that was performed at the office of the Utah Medical Examiner or yeah. performed by them. Yes. Were you able to be present for the duration of the autopsy? Yes. Does the medical examiner do a much more extensive uh, exam of the body than you were able to do on scene? Yes, much more extensive. Do you know if the medical examiner had more information uh, from external sources than you had at the time you responded? Yes. And I'll object, Your Honor, that the only way she can answer that is through hearsay. If you give me just a second. At this point, I'll overrule that objection. And I think you'd already answered that. Uh, the answer was yes. Yes. <clears throat> Do you know what the findings of the medical examiner were? Yes. What did they find the manner of death to be? Um, asphyxiation, suffocation. And was that the cause or the manner? That was the cause. Do you know what they determined the manner to be? The manner was homicide. So they determined the manner to be homicide? Yes. And the cause to be asphyxiation? Yes. Do you have any reason to refute the findings of that autopsy? No. And at the time you responded out on October 19th, had you ever heard the name Lori Vallow? No. Had you heard the name Tylee Ryan? No. Had you heard the name J.J. Vallow? No. Had you heard the name Alex Cox? No. Had you heard any connection that those individuals may have to Chad Daybell? No. I'll object, Your Honor. This, this witness does not know that. My question was if she was aware of any connection they had to Chad Daybell. Yeah, that's overruled. When you are conducting your assessment or evaluation at an unattended death, do you consider external information? Yes. If it's available to you? Yes. If you had had the information available to the medical examiner, do you believe that that would have changed your opinion at the time? I'll object, Your Honor. Speculation. I'll sustain that objection. If I can have just a moment. You may.
Ms. Dye, based on the information that you learned from the medical examiner and attending the autopsy, do you intend to modify the death certificate in this case? Yes. And what would you be changing the death certificate for Tamara Daybell to reflect? <clears throat> Cause of a death, asphyxiation, the manner of death, homicide. I have no further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Blake. Cross-examination. So have you changed the uh, death certificate yet for Tamara Daybell? No. Is, is there a, a reason why? Pending investigation or So, so it's still being investigated? Pending trial. Uh, so, so what's going to change here at trial for the death certificate? Are you waiting to, to see... If it's true? No, it will be changed. Okay. So there's no reason to change the death certificate after the trial. You're just waiting to see what happens. When I spoke with um, Vital Statistics, they told me that it's pending until, until I change it. Okay. So, um, and so a lot of things have changed for you, uh, in your opinion, since October 19th of 2019. Is that fair to say? Yes. And did the time of death change? No. You had initially estimated time of death, uh, between 12.30 a.m. and 2.30 a.m.? Is that right? Yes. And and so did that change? No. Okay. And you uh, initially estimated cause of death to be uh, natural. Is that right? Not cause. The cause is, is oh initially or yes initially. Initially, the cause was pulmonary edema. It, and what does that mean? It means um, the lungs, edema in the lungs, which causes the blood tinge sputum to come out. Okay. So from what you observed on October 19th, 2019, uh, that, that has changed now due to someone else's opinion, right? After the autopsy, yes, it's changed. Okay. And did that also change... Uh, because of what detectives were telling you? Or was that strictly a change uh, because of the medical opinion? Because of the medical examiner, who is a doctor, who performed the autopsy. Okay. So uh, you were considering doing an autopsy on October 19th. Is that right? We had discussed it, yes. And you had discussed it uh, with your deputy and the officer on on scene. Is that right? Correct. Yes. And did you also discuss it with Chad Daybell? Yes, I did mention it to him that there may be an autopsy. And did what was his response? He didn't deem it necessary at that time. I told him if we felt it necessary, we would do an autopsy. How yeah. about... Uh, Chad Daybell's, Tamara Daybell's uh, children, were they there also? Yes. And did they want an autopsy conducted? Emma, the daughter, was very adamant about not having an autopsy done. And uh, did that make sense to you as to why she was adamant about that? Um, yes. Okay. And what about another child? Um, Garth was also on scene. He did not voice his opinion. Okay. So Chad uh, and Emma, Chad and Tammy's daughter, uh, asked you, please don't do an autopsy. Um, they didn't deem it necessary. Emma was against it. 
because of the extent of she didn't want that done to her mom. Okay. And and so it, is it fair to say that you uh, believed Chad's version of events of what happened to Tammy Daybell? On scene at that time, yes, after discussing with Deputy Coroner and Officer Greenhall. Chad Daybell convinced you <clears throat> and your deputy and the officer that nothing bad happened. Is that right? Concluding our investigation, that's what we ultimately decided. Okay. All right, thank you. I don't have anything else. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Mr. Archibald. Any redirect? No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Can the witness be released from subpoena? We would request that she be released. Any objection? All right, that'll conclude your testimony. Thank you. The uh, uh, bailiff will help escort you out of the courtroom. <clears throat> This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Sure is. Thanks for listening and keeping up with all of the testimony here in the trial of Lori Vallow Daybell. We're keeping up with it for you as quickly as we can so you can take a listen to what's going on in court. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts so you don't miss any of it. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.